Two weeks before I did the DIY SOS show, I lost my dad and my sister in a week to cancer. And I was doing a job for a person who actually suffered from cancer. So we're doing it. And to, to like to take that in at the same time and do the job for these people and then have that done, I was totally, you could have struck me down. I just almost fell to my knees. <laughs> my name's Brett Bradford. I'm a landscape gardener, builder. Business could not run without my tools, absolutely not. No, there's absolutely no way. In all, I've counted about 20 episodes of theft that I've had personally. Estimated total for losses uh, just on tools would be in the region about £30,000. I can't believe that people, when somebody's given up their time, they're losing money because they're not working, to go and help someone, that they can then come along and actually think it's okay to steal from you. You know, it's bad enough when they do it on an everyday basis, but when you're helping a charity, I think it's absolutely disgusting. I've had tools passed down by family, which there's no way I could replace. They are just irreplaceable. My work colleagues have been absolutely fantastic, and they've given time as well, because they knew they didn't have any money, and they've worked for absolutely peanuts, basically to get it back up and running and get the tools back on board. But without the family, the friends and the uh, teammates, I, I would, don't know where I'd be. I'd be in a loss. <laughs> you know, so many sleepless nights, especially when we start a new site, if we're leaving machinery on site, I just don't sleep. You know, it's just a, just a big worry. It, even staff, if you have a new subcontractor on site and you don't know who they are, you're looking, thinking, you see them just walking around and they start asking questions about your kit, you know, it's just like, well, yeah. oh, you've got a lot of stuff here, and that must be worth a few quid, what's that costing you? And you're thinking, alarm bells start ringing straight away, and you're thinking, well, they might be perfectly innocent or genuine, but it doesn't make you feel comfortable. It doesn't just affect my life, it affects family life, it affects like people upset in insomnia and stuff like that. It's one thing after another. I think brands like, like Simply Business will help to aid, bring it to the attention of individuals and to the general public at large. And hopefully, if you, you emphasise the emotional and the impact it has on the trader himself, personally, as I've had, and they can understand what that person might be going through besides the tool theft, but they've got to deal with that as well. If the criminal can understand what people have to go through, not only um, what you built up for 30 years, and some people longer than that, it can destroy you. It destroys your family, it destroys everything. I suppose they, they don't realise, I mean, in a way, they're actually taking food off your table. There's actually your livelihood. If you haven't got tools, you can't work. Right. And then sometimes you've had to lend tools off other friends, tradesmen, and then you're worried that those tools might get stolen. So it's, they, I don't think they realise the consequences when they do these things. You get the police involved, and most of the police, because the resources they're tied to, and all the budgets and things like that, it's just basically a crime number, and it's just digits to them. Well, to you, it's it's everything. <laughs> Deterrents are limited, and, and I think the way the the way the courts handle it, and, and even the the prison infrastructure, is it's a softly, softly approach, and it's not going to go away. And because if you haven't got a, a deterrent it makes it an ideal opportunist for new opportunists to come along and think, well, that's right, they can get away with it. And crime, unfortunately, is paying. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work on a high base to walk around the building and so try, try a few doors at the back of the and open it up. I was really worried that Brett would pack it in at, at one point, and he actually did, quite recently, go back to his old job of a heavy goods driver but his heart's not in that, his heart is in his landscaping, and it always will be. I've seen the emotional impact it's had on him, you know, at times. He's, he'd go very subdued, very within himself, almost to the point of depression, really. Certain evenings he wouldn't want to talk, and Brett being the person that he is, he'd feel that it's his responsibility, you know, he doesn't want to burden anybody. And at times I was really fearful what the future would hold because he lost passion for something that he's put 30 years of his life into. But you've got to like 
you know, smile in the face of adversity, so to speak, and just crack on. The only way to go is to keep going forward and, and help people combat tool theft. It's, it's, that's the only way to go forward. We have to beat it and stamp it out.